Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Bruce Bro with the National Foundation for Danish America. Since last Christmas, NFDA and the Danish Pioneer have partnered to bring you these programs live from Denmark, photo tours with Benedicta. And we have enjoyed every minute preparing and presenting these programs to you. Along with myself, Linda Stephenson, editor of the Danish Pioneer, Alex Moore and Al Alice Moore and Alex Wynn of Moore Business Services, and of course, Benedicta Ehlers would like to say thank you for your very kind and warm welcome every Tuesday, and also to the hundreds who have viewed the program recordings online. It's our final program of the series, and thank you for joining us again today. As I said, recordings of all the programs are available online. You will always find them on our NFDA website at www.danishamerica.org. And our YouTube channel is now up and running. And we will also have all the videos there. Most of them are there already. Alex is adding a link in the chat so you will soon see that and you can find the YouTube channel. So when you see uh, that the link in the chat, please copy it down because we have a favor to ask of you. After the show today, please follow that link and subscribe to our YouTube channel where all the videos are at. It's free and all you have to do is click on the subscribe button because once we have 100 subscribers, it becomes easier for you to share that link with your friends and family. It just makes it easier. So please do that. We thank you for that. And we hope to add many more programs to the YouTube channel in the future. So today we return to the Scan Art Museum in Denmark with Benedicta to again talk to Kresten Langvold about the great Scan artist family, the Ankers. And Benedicta will tell you the wonderful story about the Anker family. So again, thank you. And now here's Linda Stephenson with more about today's program. Linda. Thank you, Bruce. So can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay, good. So welcome to everybody. This is our final show of the season. And we're so happy to have so many people joining us from all over the United States, Denmark, Germany, UK, Norway, Canada, Australia, US Virgin Islands and more. We hope you have enjoyed our photo tours of Denmark throughout the winter, our recent show on Danish paper cut artist Karen Beatweiler, and last week's show on the Danish painters P.S. Croyer and Marie Croyer. Today we have our final show of the season, but we encourage you to check back at danishamerica.org for new programming in the future. Today we feature Skeyens Museum in Denmark and the art artwork of Michael and Anna Anker. Bruce informs me that we now have 500 people registered for these special Zoom webinar programs and about 1,600 people have watched the past recordings. Thank you to everyone for your interest and support. My name is Linda Stevenson and I'm secretary of the National Foundation for Danish American editor of the Danish Pioneer newspaper. Special thanks to Bruce, the NFDA, the Danish Pioneer and Benedicta for presenting today's program. I wanted to give you a few quick instructions. Please note that these sessions are recorded and the recordings will be made available shortly after each presentation at danishamerica.org. These programs are Zoom webinars, so you will only see pictures of the panelists. During the presentation, if you have any questions or comments for Benedicta, please type them in the Q&A section or the chat section throughout the program, and I will collect and read them at the end to Benedicta time permitting. If you have any technical difficulties, please use the raise hand button. Under view options, you can click on side-by-side -side speaker view to get a better speaker view of Benedicta if you wish. Finally, thank you for joining us today. Please connect with us at danishamerica.org to find our social media buttons, Facebook, Instagram, our e-news, and for information about the Danish Pioneer newspaper. Now on to the show and welcome to Benedicta for another interesting program direct from Denmark. Thank you, Benedicta. Thank you. 
Welcome. Welcome to everyone. Uh, I can't wait to show you this final tour to scale. Uh, Anka is, in my opinion, the absolutely wonderful, wonderful family, and I can't wait to tell you all about them. Um, thank you for being following all this series, and now we are going to the final for this time. Welcome to Denmark, and you can see today I am in my dining room because the sunshine is so really bright, so I decided, no, I have to go in, but there are more shades, so that's here. With all the old books behind me, have been our family for over 200 years. We are going to see about Anna and Mikael Anka. And Anka, he grew up at Bornholm, way over at the East Coast, where we actually started our tours in January when we had the Lesø or Samsø on Bornholm tour. He came from Ruska, and Ruska is a little town for Bornholm, and his father was a grocery, had a grocery shop. And he was, he's born exactly 100 years before me. He is born in 1849, and I'm from 1949. He's born nine, June 9, 1849. Grew up for Bornholm, at Bornholm, and then already in 1871, he came to Copenhagen at the Art Academy, Kunst Academy. He wanted to learn about painting drawings. So that was very early in his life and he just um, loved it and was very, very good at it. But the teacher, the artist that was his masters, they did not like what they saw. So he never ended with the paper that he had the education from the Copenhagen Art Academy because they don't want to give him the paper. They couldn't really, they didn't like what they saw. Think about that, that is unbelievable. But anyway, he said, okay, I will do it my way. And he did it his way. So he traveled around and he ended up in Skane in 1874. He came to the Brundums. Uh, it was not a hotel at that time, but it was a place where he could stay. He could have food and he was able to go and paint. And Mrs. Brundum liked Mr. Anker von Bonholm so much. She just really liked him. And Anna, the daughter, she was only 14 years old and Anka followed the family Brundums and he came back summer after summer. And when already in the beginning, when Anna was confirmed, he was invited to her confirmation, this game. He came back every summer and he had to know everything about Anna. And in 1880, six years later, they were so in love. So they had the maids, all the four or five couples, artists at Skane, that came to Skane. They were all married at that summer in Skane with a week between. So they were busy at Skane Church and maybe at Brandon's Hotel. So anyway, 1880, they had the maids. And now we can then welcome the mother person in this area. Love story, dear Anna. She was a Brandon, Anna Brandon from Brandon, and grew up upon her elbow skin. And there you see her in her painting dress. And here, from very, for a year ago, they found Anna's dress, even with a lot of paintings on. But it's unbelievable that, that we have that dress she was wearing, she was painting. She liked. She went also to Copenhagen, and that is amazing that her parents sent her to Copenhagen to learn art, to paint. When you come from Skane, where there was a fisher, fisherman and hardworking family, but they allowed her to go. 
So see now a little bit. And there I took this picture. You must see it. It is gorgeous. See the way Michael Anker look at Anna. You can see it is love for a lifetime, really. And this is a book with all the sort of the Royal, Copenhagen, uh, Royal Library in Copenhagen, and that is Anna and Michael Anker's letters, brave or photographia, and a whole re register about the entire life from 1866 all the way up to 1935 when Anna died. Beautiful collection of books. And we even have Anka's wedding ring. It says Anna. It says Anna Brondo. Can you see there? <laughs> Is that something? They found that. And I will come to the story how. Here we see a self-portrait. Anka sits out at the beats and painting himself. And here he painted little Helga. Few years after, at um, yeah, six years after they were married in 1880 and 80, 86, he painted Michael Anger, his little daughter, at this beautiful. Helga was born in 1883. And Anna, I have to tell that too, to go back to the wedding ring maybe, or a little bit, but, but anyway, Anna Anger, uh, Smaller was pregnant at the 17th of August, 1859. Uh, Hans Christian Anders wanted to go to Skane too. He came to Brundum's and Mrs. Brundum was so pregnant, so pregnant as he could be. And she had so much to do to make the, to the big, fantastic Hans Christian Andersen. Here he comes to Skane. Oh my God, oh my God, and I'm ready to be bad. Well, how can, and she worked and she worked to make everything fine for Hans Christian Andersen. And the same night, she gave birth to Lila Anna. So it has uh, changed from uh, midnight. So now it was August 18, 1859, and Anna was born. Yeah. There we have Helga, and wonderful Helga was born 19th of also August, August, just a day after her mom, but some years later. So 1883, Helga was born for Skagen. And this wonderful painting is Helga's own painting. Helga paid herself sitting in her living room on first floor in the Anker house. Isn't that pretty? And that is Helga's art. And again, I would say, look like a telescope. Look, press your fingers and look into the tiger's eyes. And you will see that you can see nearly all the way through this tiger. Helga really understand how to find that life in the eyes of, in this example, of the tiger. Hun kunne finde en i dybden til dyret. And this is Helga too. Two line burn she painted in 1904. And this is Mikael Anger. Again, this wonderful lady is all oh, well, I think it is Maria and um, and Anna and Marie Kreuer or Anna Anger. And they are sitting in the left room in the Anger house. Here we have Anna Anger, the, the knitting girl, stricken the OP. And isn't that amazing? Here we have the vaccine, vaccination, vaccination, a painting from Anna Anger about how everyone was sitting to get their, their kids the vaccine. That is very up at this time. Uh, here we have Anna, and then Michael, the, the one, I think he has said, oh, there is my wonderful daughter. There is Helga sitting and doing wonderful watercolor, aquarelle malosken, and there is, I'm sure it's Helga, sitting and painting in Porske Blomst, Porske Lilie, the Easter lily in Denmark. 
Anna Anker and Michael Anker, they did this gorgeous portrait that is those, those together in their room watching a painting one of them had worked on the same day. So the Bedömer, they, they, they test the day's work from 1883, also three years after they were married. Michael Anker in Ske in P. It's beautiful. And then we have Anker's, this kind of the blue sun, you see very light, late sunshine, sun is going down. It's coming more the blue light. It's still sunset, but it will end up the blue light. And that is in the 80s. And he changed when he came to Paris, like Coyer did. He learned to change him the dark color to a very light color and see it different. Here we have the beads, anchor footstep in the sand, push for his sand. Uh, amazing how he painted the beach. And there we have his amazing, popular, uh, wonderful painting in Strand Promenade, the beach promenade uh, from 1896. The ladies walking the beach, talking. And there you see the steps in the sand too. So come on, Anna. And you can see how Anna have changed to be this gorgeous light color, so modern, so nice. And that is Hüstarbeit on it. The people on the way to harvest the fields. And then later on, you see now, there you have it in 1900, there we have 91, got in a little bit more, not so abstract, more face, more um, easier to see who it is she had uh, portrayed here. And there you can see the change too, that is five years later, the harvest people, and now there's more face, more speciality, she goes into the deeper, in the faces. Here we have also Anna, Mor med dobsbarnet i Skagen Kirke. That is the mom with the little child that is going to be baptized. Also very pretty. And then the completely different side of the life, old fisher wife, fisherman's wife, more dark color, 1887. But again, they are amazing. They are amazing to, to um, catch the faces. Skagen, wife. And old Lona is picking the goose. All the feathers probably flying everywhere. And it is Stine Bollerhus teller sal af Vedebrød. Stine from the Bollerhus, from the house where they were baking rolls. She's counting the monies from what, how much wheat bread she had sold that day. That's really down to earth, every day's work at Skagen at that time. Or the queen with the lady sitting, doing knitting, or whatever. And that is from the time when many, many, many people left Skagen, Denmark, South Schleswig, Holstein, everywhere for going to America because many missionaries, pastors came and told them, it is, we are so poor here in Denmark, we cannot get our bread on the bread on the bread. Please follow me and go with me to America. That is the mission smooth. Not everyone went to America at that time, absolutely not, but it could have been a group of, of pastor and the pastor here. But they were also what we say, the disorder steer, the dark trails and the, the intermission. And they were very, all fishermen and West Coast people were very intermission, not going Vienna. We have in America, you have the Holy Danes and the Happy Danes. The Holy Danes was from Blair, Nebraska, and the Happy Danes is from Grand View, 
in Iowa, in Des Moines. So that is Cité 2, and that's what we have in Denmark too at that time, and up to here for maybe for 40 years ago. Det er Anna Anker, der har taget missionsmødet, the missions meeting. And here we have Michael, that see his ocean, see the water, that is the fishing net he hanged up so they can get bit dry and ready for next fishing. And fiskepigerne på sladrebanken. The lady sitting and said, have you heard, have you heard, Hudson and Peterson, and blah, blah, blah. so they can literally talk about it all. So they are sladre at sladre. They are also in the paintings from the Skagen family, from the Angers. And Anker also painted Karl Locker, and Karl Locker with his big dog. That is a big man, and you can see he was also an artist from Skagen and had done so wonderful, wonderful things. And here have we uh, Fyrbakken in Skagen. It's still there, but the lighthouse is on top of it. The, the, the Webefyr, that is the hill you see here. So it's a house near the Fyrbakken. There we have um, Anker with what I mean, talk about how we can look into those faces, see how it's, you can see through them. He was amazing to catch the people. And that was, was his teacher in Copenhagen, don't like it. See there, the fisherman with his boat. It's like a photo in the oil jacket that is in today, the hat is in today. Everything is like it was a man from 2021. And here come Lars Kruse, Lars Kruse, the Erlingsman, the rescue man. Lars Kruse is actually a family in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, he, he's a third cousin or something to some in Eugene, Oregon. That is Lars Kruse from Mikael uh, Anker. And an old, old portrait of an old couple. Peaceful, beautiful. And here, some of you last week asked me, did Croyer, did they take photos before they painted? And I said, yes, they did something. And here you have the example. They draw, they did drawings of everything every person, every whatever they want to show, and the drawings was what was the fundament for the painting later on. Yeah, and now we are at the point where we will go and have the interview with uh, Kristen Langwolf from Skagen Museum about the Skagen Museum, about the Anker family. Anker family means so much to Skagen because they are, because of Anna Anka, because of the Brondos, because of they all three. Anka came from Bornholm, he stayed till he died. Anna was born there, she stayed till she died. Their daughter Helga, born there and stayed there. Anka is not uh, baptized in the church, but everything else in Skagen in Kirke for those three people, the entire life. That is so amazing. Yeah, so Alex, you can just put the interview with Kristen on if you are ready. But we can also see the drawings here, the drawings of uh, Michael Anger and the fishermen is, ah, oh, so pretty. They don't need to do, he did not need to do anything else. He could just keep it as it is. It's so nice. Yeah, let us see. We are talking to Kresten Langvel of the Scan Art Museum in Denmark. Kresten, we thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us about Michael and Anna Anker and their daughter Helga. You're so, welcome. And we see the famous painting behind you of uh, the fisherman that has died a uh, very, very famous Anker painting. Uh, Kristen, can you tell us why the Ankers are important artists in Denmark? They are important because um, um, in this period, 
uh, the painters shifted from painting uh, important people, generals, ministers, everything like that, uh, big uh, corporate people, and uh, uh, shifted over to um, uh, paint the harsh uh, living of uh, everyday uh, Danes. And um, they did that here in this little fishing village uh, of Skane. And uh, they is established a relationship between Anna Anker and Mikael Anker, a man and a woman. And at that time, if there was an artist man and an artist woman that married, the artist woman would lay down her work and only look after her husband. But they were some of the first, if not the first painters, artists to work uh, equalized uh, throughout their lives. Not only work equalized, but they used each other to debate what they made and sometimes they even painted on the same painting. So it is the first mm -hmm. sign of equality between man and woman and it's the first sign of uh, working for the people, with the people, and not only uh, painting uh, wealthy people in society. Yeah, life in Scan was very different in the late 1800s, early 1900s than it is now. <clears throat> you have about 2 million visitors to Scan every year <laughs> at this time with the tourism. But what was life like in Scan for the Ankers? First of all, uh, there's another reason why they were uh, famous because of all the European, mostly Scandinavian painters that came to Skane, none of, none of them were born here except Anna. She was born and raised her, so she knew this society very well. And, and, and um, uh, that, that meant that, that, uh, that uh, they could uh, do uh, things that uh, no one else could do. But the society was very small and isolated. There was no railroad up here. The railroad until Skane is uh, only made in 1890, very late. The harbor that we have here is built in 1908 and the first road that was um, uh, firm enough to transport uh, uh, miracles the year round was uh, only made in 1930. Before that, you have to travel by horse carriage along the beach. So it was very, very isolated and with a small population of people living from fishing and having almost no agriculture because it's all sand that you live on here. So uh, when you find the most poor people in the rest of Denmark at this time, a, a person from here would be uh, earning about uh, the half of what a poor man somewhere else in Denmark would be earning. So they were poor and very hardworking. Along with the Skaan Museum, there's also the Anker House, which is part of the museum. Can you tell us about the Anker House? Yeah, the, the Anker House is, uh, is very, very, um, a very nice place. You know, most museums like ours here is made uh, with things that has been brought, uh, uh, that has been made here, but has been traveled around the world and then brought back. When you take the Anker House, the history is that the family lived there all their life. And uh, Mikael Anker died in 1927. Uh, Anna Anker died in 1935. And when they both were died, their daughter Helga decided to keep the house completely as it was left from them. And then de devote the rest of her life to uh, make a museum out of this house. So when you come into the museum, you see the, you see the house exactly like it was left by Anna when she died in 1935. So you can see how a wealthy artist family lived in 1935 uh, and everything is uh, originally uh, original there. 
Yeah, very nice. Um, I would like to have Benedicta ask some questions now. Yeah, um, when American visit the Scale Museum, what would you recommend them to see? What do you think they should focus on? Um, they, they would like to know also how much time they shall spend to see the museum and they could do it in one or two hours or in three or four hours. So, okay. Well, yeah. it's, it's, uh, um, it's uh, what can I say? Uh, you, can, uh, you can pass through in a quarter, uh, but if you uh, have to uh, look at uh, uh, five, six hundred uh, paintings, and study them, uh, then you can use days. Uh, so um, it, it uh, all depends on how much uh, you would put into and how much time you have to put into it. If you not have several days to come and go, uh, I would uh, recommend uh, to uh, get a list of our 24 most uh, well known. We have a small um, uh, a small uh, pamphlet, a small uh, fold or binder that uh, tells uh, uh, which which uh, paintings is the most uh, important, and then you can uh, follow this. But it's a picture like uh, a painting like this. It's difficult to see it maybe in this distance, but this painting is uh, about two and a half meters high and about uh, three meters long. So to come and see it in reality gives you something else than just seeing on a little photo. So, um, and then, then um, I would say, um, then you must uh, uh, go around and, uh, but, but take the most important anchor and the most important Koya paintings and then just enjoy whatever you have time to enjoy from there. Does Scan Arts Museum offer special classes or programming? Is that possible? We have all year, uh, all season, we have uh, tours, uh, also tours in English, and uh, we have uh, from time to time special arrangements. And uh, we can, uh, if you uh, order us, uh, we can be ordered in to uh, make a uh, a trip around the things where you can decide what you want us to explain about and you can ask questions and you can do so if you contact us we can do almost exactly uh, what you uh, would like to like us to do we would be pleased to you mentioned that um, all the artists of our scheme was in a way connected they were very good friends but i understand that uh, the relationship and the friendship between Koya and Anga was very special. Can you tell us a little bit more about yeah, that? Um, in, in, in short, you can put it like this. When Anga was the first to come to Skain, he was a very uh, uh, poor and new started artist and he uh, became a little bit famous by painting uh, a painting that he was able to uh, sell to the Danish king. And at that time, Coyer was an international well-known artist working in Paris and Italy. And they met each other on an exhibition in Vienna. And uh, Coyer said, well, I would like to go to Spain and paint something. And uh, Anger said, no, 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 don't do that. It's a terrible place. It rains all the time. And it's, uh, uh, he didn't want the competition. Um, but Koya came anyway, uh, anyway. And Koya was a very uh, lively man that made parties and drank champagne. And he did a lot to promote uh, this place with his, uh, with his fame and with his, uh, Jollity uh, of uh, making a party every time it, it rumors out uh, that uh, if you come to the artist in Skain, there's always a party. It's it's like Hollywood. They uh, they uh, promoted themselves with their parties and their everything, and from all that, Anger benefited. 
so the fear that he had in the beginning of being uh, outmaneuvered by this famous uh, artist uh, instead gave him a lot and um, uh, they became became close, uh, closer and closer friends, also because the po uh, um, viewpoint of uh, working together was very different. Um, uh, Koya shared all his knowledge, all his opinion. He shared everything with his colleagues. Uh, Koya, uh, uh, Anger, when he uh, thought he had a motive, something, he kept it to himself and was afraid that someone should take it from him. But bit by bit, he loosened up and saw what he benefited from sharing instead of keeping to himself. And when Koya became old, blind, lost his wife and mentally ill, mm -hmm. uh, Anger was his greatest support mm -hmm. and Anger was the last man more or less to sit by his bed when he passed off. So uh, uh, it is a warm and long uh, friendship mm -hmm with a lot of small, what in, in, in some people call the Punic War, you know, these uh, old Roman wars uh, that uh, raised up all the time. They had a lot of differences, but they uh, were close and uh, uh, very good friends. Yeah. yeah, we see it in the painting. We I feel when I started both of them, Kreuer, Anna, uh, Marie Kreuer and Anna Anker, that they were so close friends that they probably have been really, uh, uh, um, uh, they couldn't tell each other everything and probably had had yeah. wonderful. They, yeah. they were close uh, and, yeah. and uh, they supported uh, each yeah. other and, yeah. um, and um, they were each other's closest when there was trouble uh, between Marie Koya and P.S. Koya, mm -hmm. uh, no one was closer to uh, help mm -hmm. Marie uh, with uh, the situation than the Angers. So they were uh, related closely. Also because Marie, it was uh, for both uh, parts, it was uh, marriages with two artists. Uh, so this uh, relations, this knowledge of knowing, knowing how it was to be married to another artist they shared so therefore they were able to uh, share uh, opinions in a way that uh, not many other people could show uh, share opinions yeah. uh, uh, with them and we can see they sh they have shown us both Anna and maria how ladies how a wife how they could do the work and still be a mom and still take care and I think that is something people like to see also today. Yes, yes, uh, they did. And, and uh, they were uh, spearheads of the, uh, yeah, exactly. of the um, liberation and uh, voting rights and the civil rights of, of, exactly. uh, of women. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Just a little thing that is, that is not important, but how has the COVID impact the Scan Museum? Yeah, it in, must in be fact, horrible. In fact, it has uh, it impacted us uh, so that we haven't been opened since I don't know when. Uh, <laughs> Last year, late November, something like uh, close December, January, February, mm -hmm. very March. And now we are able to open again in April and all of last summer. We had to count how many people we were allowed to uh, let into the museum and we were um, had to make uh, uh, direction uh, arrows uh, so that people not crisscross between each other. Um, it's very important for us uh, to make sure that people uh, feel safe when they come here. Uh, they yeah. should be able to enjoy, but you can only enjoy if you're not uh, afraid of being uh, infected with COVID. From, you must remember we have people from Norway, Sweden, and not so many because they have been uh, uh, let out. But we have people from all over the country coming. So if something went, uh, goes wrong here, it spreads to, uh, to, oh, to yeah. the whole nation. So it's yeah. very important for us to make sure that uh, no one is um, no one is um, infected here. Mm -hmm. 
Kirsten, uh, one of the last thing I've asked was that I, when I see the painters, all the paintings, and I can see how Anka, for example, Mikael Anka, and Fantasit also, all four, but we've, we've seen Mikael Anka, the way he could paint a face, a person, and I think that he went under their skin, he went into their heart, and I, it must have meant so much, and me, still means so much to all of us. I feel that is when people come to Sky Museum, oh my God, yeah, it, they it, are I, right there. It, yeah, it, it's right there. You can. This is the 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 fisherman that has drowned. It is inspired by a man that uh, also were rescue a uh, worker rescued more than 200 people from drowning and now he himself has drowned and left his uh, family without provider. Uh, so you see, uh, you see uh, the uh, pain in, in the face of the uh, different uh, persons, the woman in, in yellow, the little son that will now have to, have to go to sea together with his uh, uh, older uh, friends uh, that stands behind him. He's shocked, he's in, in pain because his father is dead, but in the same, same time he's alert because maybe tomorrow he'll have to go there. And he knows now that he will, if he don't take care, he will end up like his father. If you see the fisherman sitting out here, there, if you go closely to him, you'll see underneath his nose, there's a little drop, a little teardrop. This man has maybe known the drowned man for all his life. You don't know who it is, but he's a very close man. He maybe uh, tried to help him when he drowned. You, you see this full grown man with a little okay. teardrop. And if you go very close to the sun that you have standing uh, there, uh, you can see there's a little, little wet, white, uh, line maybe uh, less than a centimeter and very very thin and that makes him look like he has been crying he has a wet eye but you don't see any tears anymore so this is very closely described the motions with very small um, artistic uh, uh, the skills he can uh, paint uh, these different uh, uh, feelings into them and that is why we respond so much to them because they uh, they transfers uh, transfers a feeling of being in this situation ourselves. And that is exactly, Grayson, why I think the Scan Museum has an enormous future because we all love to see the story, the the story they have told so amazing in a wonderful way. Grayson Langwall. Thank you, and thank you to Skane Art Museum that we were allowed inside the walls, even in those Corona time. And uh, we know that there will be so many, 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 many people around the world that will watch this. Uh, so thank you very much. I'm, I'm so pleased to be able to do it. Uh, I have a great heart from for every one of you living over there. I had an old uncle living in Toronto for almost all, all his life. Uh, so um, I, I know the feeling of I've lived in, in uh, southern France for two years. That's not a long time. But I know the feeling of being out and having the thoughts at home. So I'm very pleased to uh, do this for you. And uh, I would welcome everyone uh, so much if you are ever in these uh, parts of uh, the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Chris. And when we come from America, we'll come and, and look you yes. up and have a cup of coffee with you. And, and I look you up when I'm going to Las Vegas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice Easter. Thank yeah, the you. same for you, please. You. Uh, and here we see the fisherman, Angus way to make the rescue man's. Here we see the kind of West life vest they were wearing. And you can see it's cock, cock from the trees down in. Portugal, for example, and they could keep them up over the water when they were out. They were 
being ready for going out and try to help some out at the ocean. And here we see the very famous, that was the famous painting, Anka painted in 8080 and King Christian the Ninth, King Christian the Ninth just loved that painting and he said, can I buy it? So King Christian the Ninth bought it and it has been in private collection for the royal family since the, the first one Anka did of those can han klar punten. It means they are watching a ship that looks like it's not going good. And they're watching, can he come in, the fisherman? Will he be able? That is what they are talking about. And here they are being ready to take the boat out, Redingsboat and Kirk in Klitterne. The rescue boat is on the way. You see all the horses over here. And they go through the dunes and now everyone have to bring it out to the water and then they will jump on the boat and they will risk their life, all of them. Everyone is person there, uh, is known uh, from the Skane families. And here you see they have risked a boat and they're wearing people in, bringing people in. The boy there is probably maybe already there, we don't know. But you can see it was a tough, tough life. And there we saw that is a, a, a first painting Anker did before the big one we just saw with, with Grayson. And you can see the wife, you can see her tears is running down the shin and that is here the husband is drowned. And that is the whole picture from that time where all the friends, it was just the picture some uh, Grayson used where you see the sun and you see the friends and everyone is just so Sorry. And we can see here at Skagen Art Museum, there is a beautiful piece of art that is the drowned man they bring in from the water. And here we see the funeral. And that is Anna Anker, not Mikkel. It is Anna that have made this painting. And that is the Begravelsen, the funeral. And you can see how they have the reef hanging up on and beautiful reefs all the way around. It means the life will continue. The life will continue here. Yeah. And here a lady with the grave lost her husband probably and sitting there and pray to the Lord. And again, Anna really went in to touch us. All of us will uh, touch when we see there in incredible art and that's the ladies at the Kirkegården at the graveyard by the church in Skagen discussing what happened and here they have the elder they go to Alda and church in Skagen Kirke so you can see how they really put every single day's tragedy and happiness into or tell the story. So below, it is probably the, the part of Denmark we know most of because of Anna and Mikael Anger. And that is Österbyvej in Skagen. And here the paintings of what I show you, the mission, Mission's Moods. It is a special uh, exhibition that they had for the Angers uh, in 2020. And that is where all these pictures is from, you see here how it looks at Skagen Museum, it's a pretty way they have set it up. So beautiful. And now I'm going to add the Skagen Art Museum 2020. And here we come to something, and that is amazing. Helga, their daughter. Helga, their daughter, as uh, also uh, Kristen told, uh, they found that uh, they had the Anker's house and Helga after Anna died in 1935. Helga really did not change anything. She wanted that her parents' house, the house she grew up in, should be the same as it always was. So she did not touch anything. And then she passed away. And there you, and they just did not, still didn't uh, touch anything. She passed away March 18 in 19. 
64. She had not touched anything. She lived there. She placed everything exactly where it was when mom died. And now here, for a year ago, they went down and they found so much. They found everything put in under, in, under the mattress, under, in the drawers, in the cabinets. They found things they had no idea that it existed. And that's why they can do an amazing um, exhibition. And they still can, they still work on all that. And here you see one of Anna's, that is again where she can get the light into shine on the wall. That is Koya, Anna in the door opening. And Anna, I'm going to make her own self-portrait, how she saw herself in the mirror. And now we come to the beautiful Anger House. And you can't, I can't wait to uh, say, come, come, come and see it. It is a gorgeous house. And after this founds, what they found upstairs and everywhere, it is amazing. There are doors that is open we never have had open before. You can come into all their rooms. And here we see the mattress. They found stuff put up under here. They had no idea what was put in there. They had no idea what there was in there. They just had to go and find and find it. Couldn't believe it when they found it. So here, Hemily hid on the finish after 85 years, after five more years old, they found something they had no idea about. And that's what we see, the beautiful living rooms and all the stuff in all the cabinets everywhere. They just could dig into it and see, oh my God. And that is Anna Anger in the Wexley Bell and Flower Garden at Coyle's house. And here we have a nice photo of Helga. Helga is here sitting, talking to a nice lady, Henny Brodersen, that is from the 60s. Helga never found the love, Helga never married, Helga never got kids. So she lived there until she died March 18, 1964. And she decided that that is her living room. That's where you saw her sitting in the painting. She designed it that the whole house, everything that Mikkel and Anna Anka had left her and everything that she was leaving it to us, Denmark people, all should be in a fund. So she started a Mikkel and Anka fund and foundation, they will run the house forever and take care of it. And here we have all these private things we never seen before. Here you see pen, pen and that is Helga's from Helga's room on first floor, never seen before. And all her private things. And that is Mikael and Anna Anger's bedrooms and still as when they went to bed. And here you have Sylvain still water, so we can be washed and a nice light into the room. And Anna Anka's sister, Marie Brandom is sitting and doing something and that is from Anna's hand. And Anka did this, he loved that Anka, uh, that Brandom family. And here we see a painting of Anna, uh, Michael Anka, Anna Anka, Helga and the Gamle Fu, Mrs. Brandom, and sisters to Anna. Beautiful painting from Jule Day, Christmas Day, 1900 to 1903 when it was done. Yeah. See a peaceful family. And that is Anna that have portrayed her uh, beautiful mom and grandma, but here is the Fu Brandom is reading in her book in the red stool in the red living room. And this is one that the last years has really opened people's eyes and oh my God, Anna had so many studies of this face. It's called Supine's Hole. 
it is the, the knitting girls, um, the border, bordery girls sitting. And Anna observed how the light came into that hair. And she did so many, 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 many examples. So we can see the light from all kinds of the day's light, the sunshine, the gray. And she added those color to the hair. And that was completely new in Danish art when Anna started on that. And see how Anna got this, the red room, how she could get that color into the uh, den røde stue på Amaliavej i Skagen. It is, it, for me, I love this painting. I think it is incredible how she could get the color to work. And here, little Helga listened to grandma reading a story. Isn't it cute? And again, that was again one Anna had, I don't know how many examples of this painting her best and more, her grandma sitting, reading, probably in the Bible, and Anna just light, played with the light in such gorgeous way. And this isn't cute. Lily P. Blomstern. And I'm sure it's, it is, a, it could be little Helga sitting there with Porsche Lillian. And, um, but it's, uh, it is already 85 and Helga was born in 83. So it, it, Helga was two years, but maybe uh, it is a little another girl from Skane. A little niece maybe. This is Anger. We have so many examples of how he, two years after they were married, he just loved, he loved Anna. And here you see her with the sun singer. Soul seeker, peen with soul seeker. And there's so many examples of those, and that is also so beautiful. Ah, oh, Clematis, Clematis, the interior, the blue rooms, room with the Clematis, Clematis. Here we have the gray one. That is what I think is so special with the Anka family. We saw Croyer, Croyer died in Skein. Marie died in Sweden. She did not keep the cry. She got the name Alvin. Uh, Margarita, the number two daughter, died also in Sweden. Lille Vipse Vibeke cry died in Sweden. They are split. But here we have the Anker family, the beautiful graveyard at Skagen, where we see Michael Anker here there. And he was there born June 9th. 1849 and died for Skane in 27. Anna, August 18, 59, and died in Skane in 1935. And Helga, day after mom, had 18 or 19 August, they had birthdays, and born in 83, and died in 64 at Skane. And all graves are at Skane. Here we go, and here you see Michael, Anna, and then Helga, have her own stone over here. So that is such a wonderful place also to come to Skane here before and see the whole family there. And then this painting, and I just love it. It is one anchor painted Anna with the anchor necklace. See the anchor, the silver anchor around her neck. And I think, oh my God, and it is probably Helga that is here, I think so. But isn't that a gorgeous painting to see? Wow. They really kept the anchor, Tor, Hope, or Kelly here. They had the anchor all the way in their marriage. A lucky, happy, happy family that have given us so much, even they died for so many years ago. So with this anchor, I will say thank you. Thank you to the anchor family. And thank you to every one of you that was, have been follow uh, my, uh, me on my tours in Denmark. And I hope you have enjoyed it. I know you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And if I can, Linda, I just received a wonderful, wonderful bouquet here, Lørdag Easter's 
Saturday before Easter date. And a wonderful note from all of you. Thank you for this gorgeous bouquet. I don't think I ever have had a bouquet so big and so gorgeous. Thank you. That Thank you. bouquet, I, I, I'll jump in just to say, that's from everyone, all of the viewers and people that attended from all of us, Benedicta, to say thank you to you for uh, the wonderful work you did for all of us on these programs. Thank you, thank you. It has been so wonderful to work with you, everyone. And thank you to Bruce and to Linda and Alice and Alex. Thank you for your help and everything. And thank you, Linda, for getting the idea that we should start on this. We had no idea when you asked me in November, couldn't we do some uh, virtual tours? I said, yeah, probably. <laughs> and here we are. And it has been wonderful to work with. Thank you so much. Thank you, Benedict, that we're receiving such nice comments from people. They say you are a national treasure. Oh, so, oh, thank, oh you. thank you, thank you. And, and, and uh, Michelle wrote, uh, she wants to jump the pond now and go and visit Denmark. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, I will be waiting for you. I would love to see you just come over here. Yeah. And there's so much to see, you know that. <laughs> Susanna writes, thank you for a fantastic journey. No, oh, thank you, Susan. Thank you for the wonderful letter. Mm -hmm. So, so um, one of the questions we received was about uh, the Holy Danes and the Happy Danes. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if you want to explain more about that. Yeah, or... Yes, 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 I can. Uh, we had the Holy Danes all the way into to Grundtvig. When Grundtvig came along, and in a way also Luther, but uh, Grundtvig really brought uh, it out to everyone in Denmark. Grundtvig uh, want to tell us that his explanation of what they standing in the what the Bible is saying, and the Jesus word to us was that enjoy life, remember to enjoy every day, remember to be a part of. It's others' life. Don't be selfish. Don't be me. Be us. That is a fundament in Grundtvig's thinking. That Grundtvig really want to. We have the, when the high school came. The whole story in Denmark with all the high school and after school, and he started the high school in the way it was the people, the farmer family that had only went to school very few years, very little education. And Grundby said, we have to let people know how to the world functions and how things is function. So he started that people in dining rooms, everywhere in private homes, around the farmers, in little villages, they could come after they were done in the stall and lawn, born, they can go to the neighbors and just listen to one of a little bit more educated than them. And then they learn more and more. That is the ground fundament. That is the ground fundament for the high school and for grown Vienna and the people they want. And he said, the Lord, they make wine, water to wine. So we can enjoy a glass of wine we have to enjoy a glass of wine. We can enjoy nice food. And that is then that ended up to be, so you still have the holy days where we see in Babette's feast, we are not going to smile even, it tastes good. And then you have the Grund Vienna and say, oh my God, it tastes good. Let us take a little nip more. So that is that is the difference. So in Blair, Nebraska at Dana College, there were more the, the holy days, intermissions, uh, trails they follow, and then brand new Dago and still is more Grund Vienna. So that is, I hope that can explain for you. We um, can you uh, turn your video back on, Benedicta, so we can see you. Uh, let me see how I can do that. Let's start here. How can I do that? Hmm. You just have to click the start video. It's right next to the mute. I have the big 
I, but I cannot see the, the sign for start video. I can see my name, but then yeah, there's a mute. Could it be there? It's right next. So um, th that was were that those were all the questions for today. So I want to thank everyone for joining us this season. Please remember that all of the recordings from our Denmark photo tours and the recent tours are available at danishamerica.org. Please share this news with your family and friends. And thank you to everyone on behalf of the NFDA, the Danish pioneer, Bruce, Benedicta, and myself. Stay safe and well, and stay tuned for programming in the future. And Benedict and Bruce, do you want to have any final comments? I want to just say thank you. Um, again, the flowers are from everybody, Benedicta, everybody that watches the programs uh, and us that have worked with you. Um, and thank you to Susanna Taya, who uh, arranged, helped me arrange to get the flowers sent over to you. So uh, thank you, Susanna, also. And we've been talking and we've been talking about doing other programs maybe next winter. Uh, what do you think about that, Benedicta? I will be happy to do it if you ask me for it. Then uh, I will be happy to find new. I will sing all the summer along uh, new ideas. I already have new ideas. So that would, that would be so nice. Thank you. And also I would say thank you so much to every one of you that is out there. It's amazing. It has been wonderful. Um, and thank you for all your nice messages and emails and whatever and comments we have had. Thank you. It has been great. And thank you for the wonderful bouquet. Thank you. And thank you, Linda, for helping with everything you did on this. And well, I also want to again say thank you to Alice and Alex. Without their technical help, we couldn't have done this. Mm -hmm. So thank you to both of you as well. Uh, anything else, Linda? No, it's been a great learning experience. So uh, thank you to Bruce and Benedicta, Ale Alex and Alice for helping put everything together. It's been fantastic. So thank you. We look forward to the next next time. Yes, we have learned so much. <laughs> That's good. So <laughs> I guess with that, we will say VCs. Yes. Yeah, VCs again. Mange tak, vi ses igen. Thank you.